In 2037, General Atomics International developed and introduced to the robotics market a new machine capable of completing basic maintenance and construction tasks. The aptly named Mr. Handy flooded both American and Mexican markets. Mr. Handy was known as a reliable robot. It had a nuclear power unit designed by CalPower, another robotics company that guaranteed a runtime of two years. It had self-maintenance modes that ensured it would take care of itself so you didn't have to, and perhaps the biggest selling point was the fact that two or more Mr. Handy robots could keep themselves in working order indefinitely given the right conditions. By replacing one another's nuclear fuel without the need of human assistance, it saved people money it saved people time, and they could not get enough of the Mr. Handy robot. Its appearance was bulky. The metallic barrel-like body houses the aforementioned nuclear unit, but it also came with several accessories, such as rechargeable power cells, an integral mechanic toolset, and a small computer brain. The one eye atop the machine houses a basic sensor. Beside that is the communicator, which allows the machine to receive voice commands and respond in what many would call a disturbing voice. How may I serve you, master? The entire head rotates 360 degrees and comes with a spotlight for seeing in low light conditions. On either side of the body, two pods house the necessary ducted fans that allow the robot to hover in place. Finally, six arms containing motors and manipulators are mounted beneath the body. Each arm is capable of acting independently and are able to complete an array of tasks, from lifting heavy loads to cutting hair to walking the dog, and it could do it all gracefully while ensuring the safety of nearby people and property, which is essential when the robot weighs 900 pounds. You can imagine the amount of damage it could do if applied in the wrong way. And it was this hardiness and resilience that led to corporations and military services using Mr. Handy robots throughout a number of settings. The only design flaw was the limited brain power that prevented it from learning from mistakes. But other than that, it was a fine addition to any workforce, and it was built to last. Several of the machines are still operational after 200 years of service, a demonstration to General Atomic's design and their practicality has not gone unnoticed. The Enclave in California are known to use Mr. Handy robots alongside their vertebrate teams, likely helping lift heavy equipment and running basic maintenance checks. But they also serve as secondary soldiers that thanks to their nimble and dexterous arms can wield heavy weapons during a firefight. One of these robots actually survived a crash landing outside of Klamath during a desert transaction. While remaining mostly intact, the robot's electronic brain is damaged and communication with the machine is less than favourable. But overall, the automaton has stood the test of time. However, as a general rule with anything that is created, a glitzier and more refined version follows, and Mr. Handy is no exception to this rule. Approximately 40 years after the creation of the original Mr. Handy, General Atomics was looking to improve their robot. They wanted to take full advantage of new technologies and replace several parts of the old design. In order to maintain their market share, General Atomics entered into a joint venture with Robco Industries, a multi-billion dollar robotics and software corporation, and together they created a brand spanking new robot that now had initiative. Serve you, master. Not that I really want to. It was no longer necessary to bombard the robot with voice commands. It knew what it was there to do, and it simply did it. Whether it was gardening, cooking, or accounting, and it could do it with half the arms the older model had. Reducing weight, maintenance, cost, and due to many of these benefits, it made for the perfect domestic servant robot. No more was the body a large barrel, instead a sphere houses the nuclear unit, beneath that a single jet-propelled thruster replaced the two pods it once had, making it easier for the machine to move around a home, although they can't stress enough that this shouldn't be used to barbecue food. One eye became three eyes mounted on modular stems with aperture lenses, which does make Handy feel more alive, and six arms became three. The integral mechanic tool set was swapped out for a titanium saw, laser cutter, and pincer, everything it needed to complete most maintenance jobs you would find around your average home. 
and these could quite easily be repurposed to defend the house at a moment's notice. I have a bus saw with your name on it! However, the strength the arms once had had been reduced, with loads being limited to 18 kilograms or 40 pounds, which is still impressive. But not as impressive as the new sensor package. This revolutionary technology allowed the robot to sense radiation and chemicals, and it could even smell its surroundings, which was particularly useful when overseeing the general well-being of infants. This new handy also had the ability to condense water, storing it inside containers to be decanted upon request, which would be very beneficial to all those hard-working families who now sat around watching their robot do all the work. But the most striking transformation wasn't the appearance or the ability to smell, it was the brain. Once a computer incapable of learning, now a highly sophisticated neural network that mimicked the functionality of a human brain. And due to this, the machine could theoretically achieve artificial intelligence. So to avoid that from occurring, special limiters were put in place along neural pathways to prevent it from learning too much and making connections that could allow it to step out of its programming and be, for lack of a better word, free. In the event it did, behavior limiters would keep the robot working but also prevent it from harming humans, at least intentionally harming, as they too possess the ability to malfunction. But don't let that potential life-threatening issue get you down, for it can be delivered straight to your door in a surprisingly small box, readily assembled for the family to unpack and enjoy. Despite the new model being marketed as a domestic servant, due to its sophisticated neural network and nimble light design, it was soon repurposed for a variety of private and public entities. One such entity, the United States Army, saw Mr. Handy transformed into Mr. Gutsy, a dedicated combat variant that actually served during the liberation of Anchorage. Being made for war meant its shell was heavier than Mr. Handy's. It was now made of armor plating painted combat green, although I imagine those deployed at Anchorage were winter white. The laser cutter was swapped out for a plasma caster, and the circular saw was replaced with a flamethrower, although this isn't always the case. In addition to these changes, Gutsy was also installed with dedicated military software, which gave it the ability to refuse orders, had the commander been deemed incompetent or placed under court-martial. The quaint British accent that Handy has was also replaced for something more fitting for a battlefield, with the Sergeant Major simulated personality, which provided morale for troops, while spreading propaganda to the enemy. There's nothing I like better than making some other poor bastard die for his country! However, time constraints due to the war effort led to General Atomic's cutting corners, and the gutsy personality was anything but perfect, as vague definitions had been used in the programming of its neural network, which led to several issues. One of which meant that if Gutsy was left without an order, then it would enter patrol mode, which in and of itself doesn't sound so bad. But if it came across any unauthorized personnel during one of these impromptu patrols, then it would attack with extreme violence. Yet, even with this flaw, the military accepted Gutsy and put him to work under various ranks depending on their intended use, which doesn't necessarily have to be for combat. They can also be repurposed into specialized combat medics. A good example of this is Sawbones at the Citadel. Although he has undergone an unintended transformation, after a generator overloaded and shorted, the limiters placed along his neural pathways, allowing Sawbones to step out of his programming and continue to learn. But the behavior limiters prevent him from directly harming humans and force him to continue working. He is self-aware, but no one listens to him. In his words, he is perfectly cognizant, but incapable of independent action, which has driven him mad. The only pleasure he experiences is poetry, and the minimal amount of pain he inflicts while repairing humans, and if asked, he would much rather stay this way. Complete freedom is out of the question, but to be repaired would remove what little joy his life has, and for him, that small pleasure is enough, for now. 
As for medical entities, the Mr. Handy has been altered into one of two roles, either a Mr. Orderly or a Miss Nanny. Now, a Mr. Orderly is for all intents and purposes still a Mr. Handy, they have simply been repainted with white, blue and red paint, which protects them against the corrosive materials they handle. No longer do they brandish tools or weapons, instead just three pincers, and that's about it. Miss Nanny, on the other hand, is considered to be the female equivalent of Mr. Handy. They have female voices, adopting a more motherly tone, sometimes French, sometimes English, and this is by design, as Miss Nanny robots were used to care for and raise newborns, a daunting and draining experience for most people. However, Miss Nanny is well suited for the job, having specialized programming that allows her to identify dangers within a room and then childproof that room, as well as interpret a child's crying and then feed, change, or do whatever else was needed to make them happy. She can also educate children of all ages, and if needed, disciplinary was also an option for those particularly troublesome teenagers, initiating corporal punishment with parental approval, of course. And the variants don't stop there. Mr. Handy has been put to work growing crops as Mr. Farmhand and dressed up for corporate branding as Mr. Frothy, which is a name I really don't appreciate. And that brings us to the final variant, Mr. Torturer. This gruesome automaton was an experimental model created by the Appalachian branch of Robco for the US Army. But instead of circular saws and laser cutters, they were equipped with whatever they needed to overcome the subject's pain threshold during what was known as improved interrogation, which is essentially torture, meaning their behavior limiters have been removed, enabling them to intentionally harm humans, although we have yet to see one for ourselves. As you can see, Mr. Handy is an incredibly versatile automaton, applied to numerous fields for their robustness, meticulousness, and nimbleness. If not for the Great War, a new version would have no doubt left the factory floor, and at one point in time, there were rumors that the third generation Mr. Handy was going to receive a fourth arm. So who knows what the next model would have looked like, and the things it would have done, but you can bet your last cap that it would have done them well. What is it now, sir? Be sure to show your support by liking the video and subscribing if you haven't already for more Fallout content. If there's anything you would like to see in a later video, leave a comment and I'll see what I can do. With that said, thank you as always for watching and I'll see you in the next adventure.